I have a surprise. A surprise test for you. Are you ready? I'm giving you a topic, okay? And you have to think for a minute. One thing that motivates you every day and why. Just think for one minute about it. And after one minute, write down whatever comes to your mind. Don't try to be perfect. Just write what comes to your mind at that moment. 60 seconds, one minute for you. Do it. Think about it. Yes, we'll talk about it. Meanwhile, think about it. Some of you might be able to write about it, while others might still be thinking about what to say, how to respond. Happens. If you're not able to come up with something, then this video is especially for you. Today, we are going to discuss about how to give an impromptu speech. We all have those moments when someone hands over the, the mic to us and we zone out. We feel like, ye, ye, ye kya ho gaya? So today, let's learn the art of delivering an impromptu speech. So recently, I was watching the Miss World 2017 pageant. In the question and answer round, the contestants were asked a question on the spot and they had to answer. There were five girls and only two were able to speak confidently. The winning answer was given by was given by Manushi Chiller from India. Now, how was she able to answer so confidently, precisely and calmly? This must be quite a stressful situation. Yes or no? Actually, there was a hidden technique in it. The prep technique. This technique can help you deal with impromptu situations. Now, what is the prep technique? It is point, reason, example, point. Now, let's understand it in detail. Point, where you will state your point of view. Her question was, which profession deserves the highest salary? She shared her point of view in the first line itself. Have a look. Since I'm very close to my mother, I think uh, a mother deserves uh, the highest respect. One more thing to notice, she opened by sharing something personal. Next, she gave the reason to support her point of view. Have a look. When you talk about salary, I don't think it's just about, uh, about cash, but I feel it's the love and respect that you give to someone. Then she goes on to give an example as well to further support her statement by saying, have a look. All mothers, they just sacrifice so much for their kids, so... And then, she reiterated her point. That's the fourth step. Point. Reiterate your point. Have a look. The profession which deserves the highest salary, the highest respect and love, I should, should be of a mother. Thank you, India. Using the prep technique, she won the Miss World title. <laughs> What am I doing? I feel happy for her. This is how effective this technique is. Whenever something comes up, impromptu, use prep. One thing that you must have observed is that her answer was super crisp, but very impactful with every statement. Yes or no? The second one. This is the power of less is more. When you deliver an impromptu speech, it is better to say less. I remember in the college days, I participated in the extempore. The topic given to me was quite interesting and I got excited to speak about. But when I got on the stage, I started on a positive note, but became more excited. I didn't articulate my thoughts well. There's a lot of repetition which didn't come to my notice while delivering. And I thought I was going to win. When the results came out, I was kind of disappointed. And then after some time, I went to the judges and said, uh, ma'am, where did I go wrong? Even today, I still believe in what the teacher, the judge said to me. 
A few words can make a lot of difference with us. Think about it. It's not always necessary to talk a lot, but keep it thoughtful. Impromptu speeches are all about how you're able to articulate your thoughts in an instant. If you talk less, there are less chances of embarrassment as well. Think about it. <laughs> the third trick is storytelling. We all have moments in life where we have to speak impromptu. I remember when I was in college, I participated in a competition that had multiple rounds. And one of the rounds, the host gave a topic and we had to speak on the spot. So the topic given to me was, the color affects the way people feel. Now this is unique, a unique topic. And honestly, I have never given a thought to it. Afterwards, I took a moment, I gathered my thoughts and started my speech like this. I wanted to go back to my roots. I grew up in Dehradun and studied at Brightland School. I had the best time of my life there. I remembered my school was surrounded by a lot of greenery and it had a lot of colorful flower pots. Watching flowers during recess was my favorite pastime. It gave me joy. I know it sounds crazy, but watching those colors around me sparked creativity in me. So yes, color affects the way people feel. Instead of delving into color theories and some data facts and, and points, I shared a simple anecdote from my own life. The best part is that it requires no research, no investigation, and you need not memorize anything. When in doubt about what to say, just tell a story from your past, connecting it with the topic stories. Stick with people. Yes or no? You remember stories from your life, right? Maybe a movie, maybe your childhood, maybe what your grandmother told you or anyone. That's the beauty. That's the beauty. Now, the next technique is PPF technique. Let's talk about Public Provident Fund. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> not at all, not at all. This is one of the simplest structures you can follow PPF. That is past, present, and future. PPF, yes. Through this, you describe the past situations, share the present scenarios, and add an insight to how the future will look like. This format can be specially used in meetings or even presentations. Let's say you are in a meeting and you have to put your point of view. You can share like this. Based on the past results, the campaign for Women's Week didn't work well and the reason was people didn't engage with content. However, for the Father's Day, Campaign, we are trying a unique idea. The purpose is to increase the shareability of the content. I feel this approach can work. Let's see what stepping into the unknown looks like. Adding to this, the experiment can help us in planning future campaigns. This is how you can deal with an impromptu situation with the PPF technique. Sounds good? The fifth one, create imagined scenarios. It puts your audience members directly into the presentation by allowing each member to visualize an extraordinary scenario. I told you about the competition where we had to speak impromptu, right? So one of the contestants used an innovative technique of starting a speech. He said, imagine scenarios. It was a memorable introduction. I can recall it. It went something like this. Can you imagine? A world without food? Can you imagine a world without water? Can you imagine a world without air? Can you imagine a world without stories? No, we can't. Stories are an integral part of our lives. And then he shared his point of view on storytelling. Isn't that brilliant? Isn't that great? You were like, oh my God, what's happening? And you were there in that world along with him, along with me, yes? When you ask someone to imagine, you're asking them to follow your thought process and the audience will automatically focus on what you are saying. You can take them anywhere you want. You can also take things slowly. 
and then you create imaginary scenarios which will allow you to break intentional breaks. They can help you collect your thoughts. An extra pause brings all the attention right where you should want it on you. Yes, on you. With this, that's all for today's video. Hope you enjoyed watching the content. This is the last part of the public speaking series. Do let me know your thoughts on this. Until then, stay awesome, stay productive.